Side home theater podcast, a home theater podcast. It's all about the experiences, the sights, the sounds, the scenes. Yeah. Actually, sorry, Deej. Sorry, can we do that again? Can we just quickly do that again? I've just suddenly thought of something. Go on, Deej, one more time. Okay. Uh, hey, home theater nerds, blah, 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 blah. the sights, the sounds, the Swifties. Hey. Jeez. <laughs> I, I, somehow I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, that didn't have the payoff that I was hoping time. for. Yeah. That really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest, Steve. Love you, brother. But geez. <laughs> uh, you know, it's worth a go. It's worth a go. It's worth we, a go. That was, we should have gone over that one in rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have lib. Don't yeah, ad-lib. yeah, exactly. Don't yeah. Ad-lib. Uh, off script again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we got oh San Antonio Ariel in San Antonio, Texas. Nice, hey Ariel. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have Steve at so just like wow, early start. Glad I wandered over. Congrats on breaking the one thousand barrier. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, the early start. Uh, today's uh, my wife's birthday, 1017. Uh, pretty cool. So uh, if you saw that on Twitter and everything, but that's why we kind of bumped this out up a little bit because I have a dinner date with uh, with Jen at, and I've got to get out at 630 so that we can make our reservations that she told me she was making as we were, as I was coming down here <laughs> to the I'm studio sure under pe- the stairs. <laughs> The Pizza Hut still do reservations? I didn't think they did. I'm confused. Hey, (laughs) when you are us with, you know, we reached a thousand followers, there comes some perks, you know? It's like you call the Pizza Hut and they go, oh, you? Okay, yeah. (laughs) Got that back corner so we got windows on both sides, you know? Extra cheese. Oh, live, live in large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuffed crust, breadsticks, and oh. yeah, <laughs> salad bar. You so, know. Yeah, <laughs> what's better? Hey, well, I, oh, I, Joe, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Deed, you're just a shade already there. But checkers are what? Oh, yeah, check shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more patterns and all. Nice, good. All right, yeah, that's well, see. That's the problem, Joe. Your your moir patterns and all. You got to have your system calibrated, buddy. This, I'm testing your system right now. No, come on. Hey, you're gonna mess with me. You better come hard because it's you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see. We got lots of stuff. Oh, speaking of that, uh, John just opening his little soft drink there. Um, great, <laughs> nice segue, John. Just like we did that Thanks. one. I, I- I planned it. Yep. We did that in <laughs> rehearsal. John did yeah. not go off strip, script, strip. Blah. Um, Where are you, you going did? tonight? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's already started with the drinks, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. He's throwing um, it in the bag all right. He ate some cookies or something. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, when you hear that sound, not the one John just made, but later, that's where the 1017 comes from. Because it should be at the 10 minute 17 mark. Every show you'll hear the soda or the drink open. Um, and that's at the 10 17 mark for Jen's birthday. It's been there since chat. It used to be in the chat show. It's in this show. People have asked mm-hmm. in the past. Sometimes it gets dropped out when I'm editing and I'll slide something over in Adobe and it just <laughs> disappears. And I'll be like, damn. But most <laughs> of the time it's, well, because it's there now. It's like, yeah. um, it's in my uh, setup. But we got a lot. We got a crazy, crazy group of show like to this show today. Uh, one, I'm two. I'm super excited about that. Literally, should both be show titles. Um, mm. I'm so excited about them. But we got some news we got to talk about. Uh, we got our own news to talk about. We got obviously, as Steve mentioned, we hit the thousand. Uh, so for people that are paying attention, people that want to know, yep, it's all set. We are booked. We're ready to go. I, I I got the venue ready and everything. The 24-hour podcast is off and running. I started planning it over the weekend when I saw what was coming. Just hours ago, moments ago, 
I realized another reason it's planned for this date. Uh, so the date is November 4th, starting at 6 a.m., 24 hours of home theater. <clears throat> uh, tagline is the, I always forget it. It's the two, oh, the home theater two dozen. Go big or go home. I'll tell you why that is in a minute. Steve is very well aware of this one. Um, so I was looking at the calendar and I'm like, oh, when can we do this? And you got the holidays coming. So I didn't want to get too close to that. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. Here's, oh no, something just jumped right out at me. And I was like, I got to do that. I have to do that. That has to be the day. Uh, so November 4th for people around the world. Uh, yeah, that's the day we set our clocks back. So at two o'clock, it, it Sunday morning, Saturday night, 2 a.m., we set our clocks back to 1 a.m. And then we do it all again. So that's what Steve and I are going to do. <laughs> Steve's joining me at 1 a.m., getting up on his side of the pond at 6 a.m. We're going to go till 2 a.m., set the clocks back to 1 a.m., and do it all again. And then uh, we'll go through. <laughs> so that's where you come up with the home theater two dozen it's 24 hours of 25 hours of home theater talk. Um, I was in the Patreon. We did our Zoom chat last night and there was uh, lots of laughing at me and giggling at me and wondering if I'm going to make it. And there were a few comments of, I can't wait to see you in the morning falling, like falling apart. <laughs> and I was like, I looked around. I'm like, does everybody think this is that hard? I was like, uh, I'm just like sitting here. All I got to do is talk mm. and more than a couple of people, as I've reached out and started talking to people about it, like scheduling it and they're like, well, I, yeah, you should be all right booking all of this because you could do two to three hours by yourself a couple of times in that time period. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thanks. I know. So yeah, November 4th, mark the date. You can pop in and out. It, it's going to go down as three different um, streams because uh, YouTube only allows 12 hours. And instead of doing two 12 hours, which 25 won't fit in that, I, I tried to make it. It's, I kept doing the math. It didn't work. Um, but even <laughs> if it was 24, I was still going to do three because I didn't want it to be like, all right, it's a, you know, in the middle of the entire thing, have the stream just end on me and not get a good transition or something. So at least now I can run a little longer on one and then just try make a nice transition to the other, tell everybody what to do. And then when the final hour comes, I can just be like, okay, here we go. And it's not like I'm like, Oh, Todd, we're cause Todd's doing the front and the last and the first, um, Todd, we're going out. And it's like, bang and have it shut down. So, um, but there will be three different streams. Those will be going up fairly soon. Uh, so you can uh, set those as reminders. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I've got quite a few people slotted already. But um, listeners, anybody, it's audio and video. It's this. We're going to be doing this. So if you're willing to come on, I'll, I'll start. Um, I can start filling in some gaps. Uh, and um, I'm looking at... First, I was thinking two hours for some people, but I'm trying to limit it to like one hour for everybody. And then if if I get enough people, I'll just keep doing that. But if I have to backfill and stuff, I can, you know, we'll see what happens. But it, I, I've got, I think, I don't think it's going to be uh, an issue on uh, booking people. I really don't. But um, what's this, Joe? <laughs> what's the over under on going over and by how much? <laughs> <laughs> I I love it. I love the confidence. Thank you. That's the first, you're probably not the 30 first, minutes. Yeah, you're probably not the first person to think it, Joe, but that's the first person to publicly say, oh, this is going over. <laughs> yeah. Over under is 30 minutes. Yeah, is it yeah, on going over. What what's the what are the odds I don't make it? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Well, there's no there's there's no hard and fast rules to it. You know, if you need a power nap for Ten minutes while someone else talks that's not going to be an issue surely mm -mm. you know these things happen that, that could be enough to get you through if you have to that's fine no no way you, know, you just put your mask on your sleep mask on sleep <laughs> at the thing and we'll we'll take over you'll be okay <laughs> yeah I've had over a, 10 minutes i've had a few people <laughs> ask if i'm going to do any like pre-recorded interviews and stuff and i'm like mm. no that's cheating 
Mm. I'm like that defeats the whole purpose of like, I, no, I want to go the whole way. I mean, the idea is if I'm a mess at the end, that's entertainment in itself. Right. If I make it, I make it. If I if I'm a disaster, I'm a disaster. See what happens. All for fun. I don't care. Paramedics on standby. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. So yeah. So that uh, you can reach out to me at you know Brightside Home Theater at gmail.com. Uh, and uh, if we'll, we'll get that booked up. Uh, the other one, obviously, we made it to uh, a thousand, and um, so I I I went and I did the whole a thousand thing. what DJ. Thousand subscribers <laughs> on YouTube. Thank, Thank you. John. For those that might not know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're right on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I, I told you I'm not good at this. <laughs> I am not good at this at all. Uh, Don Hensley is he new? Don, are you new? Yeah, new? yeah. Red Bull on standby. Uh, we had that conversation in uh, Patreon <laughs> last night. I can't do Red Bull. I can't. It goes mm. right through me. It might give me energy, but I'd be like. Pfft. I got to get out of here. I mean, it is bad. Uh, I can't do Red Bull. Um, I do do these brought to you by Rain Energy Drink, but I'll do one of these a day. I still have this one from this morning. So I I was telling the guys last night that the same thing. Um, Yep. Paul, (laughs) apparently so. Discussed those (laughs) options last night. So yeah, Paul was in the chat last night. Yeah. You see, I, I, I mean, it's not an infomercial, but, um, I, Red Bull's the only energy drink I can drink that I like. Yeah. And I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee. So I can, I appreciate, I can say that this side of the pond, say it over there. And I think you get shot. Yeah. Um, So I think it's pretty much, what's that? The 15th amendment. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you must like coffee. Um, so I, it's I, one yeah, a. Red Bull's the only thing I can drink yeah. <laughs> in the mid, in the middle of the night when I get called to police stations, Red Bull's the only thing that, that gives me the kick that I, that I need to get through it. Um, cause I can't stand all the, the other energy drinks, just not very great, you know, not good, but, um, but yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see. Oh, I was reading the car. Uh, Jordan, I'll get to that comment in a minute. I starred mm. that. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yes, back to, uh, you know, a thousand YouTube subscribers, uh, which means we get to, um, quote unquote, be YouTube partners. So I put us in and we got approved for that. And um, the only thing I clicked on is you can you can become a, a member of our show. It's another way to support the show. There were different tiers offered. You could set, I could set it up for whatever I want. I just clicked on the single tier. Um, and it's four 99. You don't have to do it. I'm not doing anything. It's just another way to support the show. If you do it, great. If you don't, um, that's fine too. Uh, if you do it, you get a badge and when you're in the chat and stuff and I went through and I made, you get a badge for the new members one month, two months. Uh, what was it? Six months guys. And then yeah. I think, and then I have yeah. to come up with one for a year. So who knows if anybody joins, they join, if they don't, it's like, but I figured I'd put that in and be fun. Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can, um, it's the, uh, what do they call it on YouTube here? I signed us up for it, but it's like, you can, um, a super chat if you, mm. you can pay to, and then you're, you get a highlighted <clears throat> on our side. So we see it easier and stuff. Uh, you can do that. And I, I don't even know. I honestly, I don't even know what the pricing is for that. I don't know if you get to choose a price. I think like, they donate. They donate. I think they donate because oh, okay. Kevin Smith does that on his YouTube okay. shows too. I've heard other people doing it, and I hear the amount. So, but I don't know if you pick your amount or how. I honestly, I don't. I just went through, and they said, "Yep, you can have those." But I didn't put in any commercials. I didn't put in anything like that. That so I just wanted to. I, I want to be supported. I've always wanted to be supported by the listeners. So whatever this is great. We, we, and obviously we really appreciate it. Um, so that was exciting, but I'm more excited about the, uh, 24 hour live show. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, only moments ago, I dawned on me, uh, John, I think pretty, I had to look, I didn't look it up yet, but I'm pretty sure the fourth is also the anniversary of Brightside home theater. Oh it's, really? Yeah, oh, it might it, be. Yeah, it's, it was. It was a year it will after. Also, also, be my bus bench anniversary as well. Really, really? November fourth. Yeah, that's that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. November the fourth. Yeah, the show that that now, of course, it's when serendipity. we did those, we were record with those all pre recorded, weren't they? And then put out right. on the thing. So, mm-hmm. so it, it's. But it was the fourth. It was according to the the YouTube thing. I was looking it up, and it was the three hundredth. 
you know, what well, was the third, third anniversary? Third anniversary, was. yeah. And it was that show. Yeah, that was the one I was first on it all together. All three, all yeah. three of us. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's relining, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, like I said, I was literally just doing the. Um, Chris has just done it, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Super chat. Chris Brown. There you go. 99 cents. Thank you. And he's just, just letting us know it's 99 cents. That's a great super chat. So, <laughs> um, and uh, at full disclosure, we get, according to YouTube, we, we can, get 70% we can use the of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get 70% of that. First make super a chat. <laughs> yep. First super chat. Thanks, Chris. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Now I'm all giddy. <laughs> oh, and I just got paid. <laughs> yeah, so you can have you can have, you can have the salad. Now. Yeah, you can have the steak tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and I see how it comes through highlighted too. His comes through yeah. blue. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So that's our show. <laughs> we made ninety nine cents. Um, that's awesome. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Um. So what else? Uh, we're, 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 I'm way off track or on track. What else have we got going on? So we got that. So the anniversary date, it's the 24 hours of the show. Like I said, the only reason I did it is because I saw it on the calendar. That's when we set the clocks back. And I thought that would be pretty funny. Right. And then like, yeah, hey, I'm going to be up all night anyways. What's one more hour? So and then now <laughs> we've got to bet on over unders on how long I go extra. So don't tell. <laughs> ah, now nah, I'm going to tell Todd that I'm going to be like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right um what's now oh let's see uh so yeah so jordan had just jumped in jordan jumps in hey guys am i late just been notifying that indiana jones indiana jones and the dial of density uk physical release confirmed for the 4th of december i think so, that's the u.s release too is it pretty okay. sure yeah on right. monday oh, on maybe well, probably maybe the maybe tuesday the yeah the mm. fifth yeah um, so, uh, Jordan one, no, you're not late. We're early, uh, because it's my wife's birthday. So I got to head out at six 30, but that's cool. Thank you for letting us know that about Indiana Jones and the dial of density, um, December 4th and 5th for the two different. Did you, did you guys see that earlier today? Bill Hunt on the digital bit saying in 26 years of doing this stuff today, he's had more release announcements than he's ever had in a single day. No, oh, really. I didn't and saying that no. just so anyone saying Best Buy not doing physical media anymore means physical media is on the way out is very mistaken. Oh, if yeah. I know one more thing so, about Best Buy, I'm yeah. going to blow my brains out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. At least saying, get to the you know, fourth. Chris Oppen uh, Oppen I mean, you guys aren't on Facebook uh, and oh, right, oh, well, social media, but yeah. oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, it used to be my first stop off on the when I used to get to America. Yeah. Always pass by straight away. No nope. suitcases. But like, like I said on Twitter when it happened, and people upset. I'm like, I've seen, and John and I have seen. We've all seen. It's not anything special. You've been around. I mean, all of the places that I used to buy all my physical media, they're all gone. Right. Physical um, media is yeah. still here, and it's right. been here before us. It's been here before legitimately what home theater is today it was you know vhs it was 80 bucks a tape and then when that dropped to 19 it's kind of coincides right around the time of the boom of home theater it's like mm -hmm. i mean right when john and actually john and i started right before that because i know uh it happened shortly after and we're like we can buy vhs now it's cheaper <laughs> right. uh instead of just <laughs> renting these tapes but um but yeah I mean, so you know, it's always been well, around I was to say the only thing about it, and I know I'm the one that just said I didn't want to hear about it anymore. But the thing <laughs> is, it's like the vitriol that people seem to have towards Best Buy because of mm. this. Like it's some kind of, um, like they're proclaiming the death of physical media. Like, do you guys think Best Buy doesn't want to make money? Like, no. If this was a if this was a profitable venture for them, they would not make this decision. So, and it's no other. Re there's no other reason for right. it. Literally none. Like I have a small mm. business. If something doesn't sell for me, I get it on clearance and I get it out and I put something else in its space. Yeah. So it, the fact mm. that so many people are just like, you know, deep, just screaming at Best Buy, like for making a decision that helps keep them in business <laughs> Yeah. by, by selling mm. more profitable product lines. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know? it, it just makes me like crazy reading all this stuff. 
Uh, and I don't know why I do. But See, I, I, I think, can't, I, I think, can't help myself. It's like watching right. the car accident when you're going by. I think Best know? Buy is but, a victim of another one of the victims of COVID because right. pre-COVID, I used to get up early on Tuesday mornings and either go to Best Buy or if it was uh, that popular of a movie, I would rush at 6 a.m. to Walmart to grab a copy so I could watch it before I went to work. Otherwise, I just bought it at Best Buy on my way home from work or on my way to work and then watched it that day. But then COVID hit and everybody's everybody's buying shifted because you couldn't do it there. You had to do it this way. It was too difficult. Like you had to wait. When they did open, you had to wait in your car and they would bring it out to you. When it was just easier, like the hoops you had to jump through to keep Best Buy going and I'm not blaming the hoops. It's what we all had right. to do, right? But you just go on Amazon, click, and it was at your doorstep. Right. And then you get more and more people. How often do you see on Twitter or or social media be like, it accidentally showed up a day early. It's like rolling right. the dice, you know? But, I mean, you do also hear, oh, that Amazon forgot to deliver it or it's right. delayed. But, but both of those are rare. But most of the time when you order it, you get pre-order it, you get it day and date that it was released, right. which is, mm. that's what did it in. And Well, well, I was mm. going to say, the other thing too is most, and most of the people here have probably seen this on, because it's been all over social media, but what you have to worry about is Walmart, not anybody else. Like the amount of physical media sold, mm. Best Buy was 4%. Amazon, which you think is a juggernaut, was like 11%. Walmart, it was something like 48 or 49% of really? all physical media was sold at Walmart. So Best Buy going out of this is 4%. Like it, it makes mm. no dent at all in the amount of physical media that was sold. Yeah. Now, I think that's all physical media. So when so you're probably DVDs. talking about Walmart, you're probably talking about the $5 DVDs. But still. Yeah, because like, Walmart, didn't they a couple of years ago say they were getting out of the 4K part? Because it wasn't profitable, and they weren't. It's not doing in their stores. Much. They very yeah. ha they have almost none. But online, they still have it all, just right. like everything else. But in their stores, yeah, it's all DVDs and some Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, I mean Walmart. Wait, and that's a you know, good when you business hear Walmart's decision. getting out of it, then you have to worry. <laughs> but well, um, yeah, and and we chatted about this last night too. And Paul and I chatted after. Like he was uh, Paul hurt. He was the last one in the Zoom call, and it's. I mean. To me, it's, and everybody's like, oh, the demise of physical media. It's like, it, it's like if physical media goes away, it's going to be replaced by something else. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like, it's not like all of a sudden physical media is going to go away and everybody stop making movies and there's zero content. Mm -hmm. And the only way something else replaces physical media, I hate to say it, is it's going to be better. Right. It'll <laughs> have to be better. John, yeah. in all our years... It, it has it ever gotten worse? <laughs> it's like I would say the DVD laser disc. There was an argument there that right. it got worse for a little bit, but the it it definitely got cheaper, and but it was it was at least level more market better marketing. But ever since then, it's just like everything has been. It's just look at this, look at this, look at this, and it's. And I, I think streaming would be, I've said it before, it's going to be the demise of physical media because it's going to get so good that the only thing left to do is to collect the boxes and there'll still be people doing that. Right. And we ha that's why we have these, you know, boutique studios and stuff coming out with the nice steel books or the nice editions and people will collect those. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, don't worry. It's, it's not all doom and gloom, you know? So... Um, <laughs> Well, I'm certainly going to miss it on my next trip stateside. Yeah, I, I it's just got such an emotional thing for me. I I absolutely mm. used to love going in there, and just, and and I kid you not, both times I went to San Francisco, you could go I buy a refrigerator. Landed. Well, quite. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's still there, <laughs> it gives me Steve. Chills. It's a big carry on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's so I you know Ship I literally it. landed, get to the hotel, drop the bags off, get a cab. I mean, the last time in San Francisco, we had a limousine. Take us from the hotel straight to Best Buy. To Best Buy. <laughs> waited outside. I know. Wait, and and in San Francisco, the one that we were at, we were in this Hilton hotel thing. They're like, who is this, this guy? One, we better treat well, him this, right. We're quiet. But the Best Buy was in like a really kind of rough neighborhood. I mean, there's no right. getting away from it. You wouldn't want to walk in the streets. So we pulled up outside, and it, and it was a you know a Mercedes limousine. It was a proper 
you know, proper job. Right. And I'm like, do you mind waiting? We'll be about half an hour. And I just ran in armfuls of discs, you know, put, you know, four or $500 down, come out with just bags full of these things and then back in and back to the hotel. And then the next year we did a West Coast tour and I went to about 15 different Best Buys. You know, just <laughs> buy another so bag to take home just to. Oh, just oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Take, take a suitcase <laughs> within a suitcase. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But I, so I'm going to miss that. that that's the, yeah. There's going to be something missing yeah. next time. You know, and, and if Walmart aren't really doing them, and it's not the same somehow having them pre-delivered to the hotel, you know, it's just right. not from Amazon or wherever. Yeah, right. It's not the same. No. You know, I know there are people, you know, people that follow me on Twitter, that's what they do. You know, when they land in the US, they've already got the stuff coming from Amazon to the hotel room. That's right. not as good. It's just not yeah. the same. <laughs> no. I'm going to miss it. Yeah. R.I.P. Best Buy physical media collection. Yeah, I sure. mean, I, <laughs> Dave, the guy that's my Laserdisc store, uh, he hmm. was so against DVD, he didn't get on board. He was one of the people that he was touting that it's not better, it's not this, it's not that. And that, to me, is like, that That one hurt me a lot because he, it, he went out of business. And this was before texting and cell phones and social media and everything. So you didn't, <laughs> you, whoa, nice. There you go. We've got to get that in straight away. Yeah, nice. I guess it, it, you know you get highlighted in green, Greg. Definitely with a, get the steak now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hun, you can have one drink. Um, <laughs> uh, Non-alcoholic. No, <laughs> yeah, I'll allow a coke. Um, Greg with a five dollar super chat. Started early. I see. Happy Tuesday. Thanks, Greg. Five dollar super yeah. chat. Thank you very much. Um, Greg. Speaking of Greg. Uh, I believe Greg, this is Greg. That was today's takeover Tuesday with the Gramani mm. speakers. There. Did you guys get oh, to nice. hear that? I, I didn't get a chance to listen. Oh, don't miss it. Yeah, not yet. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's, I went back, I, I edited it and then went back and I was listening to it today. And, uh, it's, it's so good. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, PK said something on Twitter. He was like, he's like the childhood, the childish, I, I, the child, like, enthusiasm that's what it was that i had mm -hmm. listening to him and um i think i said it on the show last week it was so much fun and i was so glad it wasn't until after we were done um we chatted for a little bit after we recorded and then he emailed me the pictures i'd never seen it so i was so glad i hadn't seen it because it enabled me to have that line of questioning that I couldn't picture what he was saying. If I didn't understand it, I, I was like, I want to know. Right. And then he shared the pictures afterwards and I'm like, Oh man, it would have been disappointing if I was just like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Cause every, all the listeners would have been like, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I felt like it was a really, really good opportunity. And uh, thank you, Greg, for sharing that and the, and the fight all super chat. Appreciate it. Mm. And, um, and we've got a Joe, uh, has done one as well, which we should. What's up? Put in there. Joe Herzl also put in a ninety-nine cents one as well. So, oh, nice um, super sticker. There we yeah. go. Okay, uh, we're learning this as we go. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of it, it'll be like, all right, roadside home theaters no more. They retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, one show. Never yeah. heard from them again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seven ninety eight a week. Yeah. Didn't take much yeah, either. Really, <laughs> sitting on a beach, earning twenty percent. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh my God! It's the same accent and everything. Jeez, that's not fair. <laughs> oh, uh, Alan Rickman's much better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I don't know where we were on that. Where were we? Before? <laughs> it shows <laughs> off the rails now. <laughs> like, Already, people start throwing should... money at us, and uh, yeah. we were completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> John, John, John will be naked by the end of the I know I'm going to need a, a box of Kleenex before this is all said and done I thought that's what this was about people waving dollars in his just, face just fucking virtual one dollar bill yeah, it's hard. It's virtual hard. Yeah. What, what color is a ten dollar super chat yeah. <laughs> oh, Come boy. On, sorry, sorry, I'm just joking we're just making. having fun yeah. so um, <laughs> uh, all right and the last thing I wanted to get to, I was talking to Nelson today. I saw the news on uh, Youth Man's YouTube page about, uh, did you see Zapiti's replacement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I have some personal news to share. And I talked to Nelson and we were cracking up. Um, the guy in that video on Youth Man, his name, Raphael, 
obviously he says he used to he says in it the company I used to work for Raphael's the guy I used to talk to. So oh, yeah. when I got my Zapiti, um, in longtime listeners will know because I got my Zapiti in uh, 2020, the fall of 2020. After I saw Nelson, I I featured his theater in on the website, and I saw his Zapiti, and I was like, "What? I'd never heard of it before, or I thought I hadn't." Um, and then I realized, oh, I had heard of it. I just thought it was too expensive. But then I got the breakdown and was able to do it. So I did it. I had some issues because it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. And Nelson gave me Raphael's number. So we talked and he helped me through some stuff and I was having issues. And I mean, it took a little bit to resolve it, but I got it running with Raphael's help. Raphael, when the new stuff was coming out, I had reached out to him again. I'm like, these are pretty cool. How soon would they be out and stuff? So I would tell you guys and everything, and I was going to get one. And then Raphael went dark. I couldn't, I, I wasn't, <laughs> Nelson got one, um, but I wasn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't buy one. I couldn't get a hold of them. And I couldn't find a place to buy one. Uh, John, Johnny Speaker's got one. But anyways, so what I said to, and I'll, I'll share it with everybody. What I said to Nelson, I was like, this is suspicious to me. I think it's businesses. This is how business is done. Is the whole entire, what is it? Revon company that came out with the Blu-ray players and everything. Was that company founded because of all this? Like they knew this was coming. So they came out with a company that's going to make Blu-ray players. And like what Giles and I were talking about, Giles, Brett and I were talking about, it's like Plex is shifting themselves away from this and they're going to like, look, their main focus of Plex is to organize your digital media. Well, the main focus of Revon, I think that's the name, uh, is to look, we make Blu-ray players, we make this, but then all of a sudden, oh, lo and behold, Zapiti out of business and Revon, same company, under the same umbrella as Zapiti. Oh, they have a media player now. That's not their main focus, but they got one. And oh, look at the software on it. It looks just like Zapiti's. <laughs> to the point that Raphael's putting the video out, going, I used to work for another company that did this. <laughs> it's like, so. <laughs> I don't know. Are Zipedes and the software for Zipedes that's coming out? Do you just get a revon? Do you do that? I don't know. But very interesting uh, news to me that I thought like, and that's that's how business happens. And like I said to Nelson, I said they do this under the advisement, and I say advisement of the lawsuits or whatever they were having because of what they they couldn't keep in business so i'm not saying they were being advised literally but they see what the the lawsuits are you cannot do this and so they take that and go we won't do that so we'll do this and does that get them in there so i don't know but very interesting um all right i read something different i don't know how true this is but i read that it really had nothing to do with legal issues and that one of the owners one of the founders of zapiti basically forced the company into bankruptcy Hmm. And that's why they went out of business. It really wasn't much to do with – because other than in the U.S., r ripping those discs is legal pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, but so, the U.S. is a pretty um, big market. Well, I know, but hmm. but my understanding, at least if I, from what I was reading, was mm -hmm. that it wasn't necessarily because of legal issues. It was because one of the owners – um, forced the company into bankruptcy. And if that's the case, that doesn't happen overnight. So the fact that they were planning on this m a couple of months ago and had this ready for launch already is because they knew that was coming, right? Like you don't just go out of business or go into bankruptcy in, in a day. You know, it takes, it takes yeah, a Yeah, but why are they going into bankruptcy and why is I don't, it like, well, I don't why know. can't... That I don't know because well, that, I... But that's what we were uh, talking the company, about. Right, that's what I'm saying, but... So then basically everybody else just took their company, changed the name and <laughs> put out right. a new product, you know? Um, but see, that's it, the thing is like what we were speculating with when the, the podcast with Giles and Brett and I, it was, if this was anything else, if it wasn't lawsuits, if it wasn't other issues, then somebody just buys the company. And then you just keep going as business as usual. The fact that they actually shifted this entire thing, one company goes out of business 
and the exact same company is now in business as under a different name as something else, but it's doing it as a small, like Zipedi itself was the definition of Zipedi, right? That's all they did was rip discs. Now this new company is just that, that, that media player is just, it's like a plex. It's, it's not the only thing these things do. You can also get this, look, the, I forget, not Magnavox, but whatever the, uh, their top of the line Blu-ray player is, right? Magnetar. Magnetar. There you go. Which is ironically, they bought pretty much the, it's like an Oppo, right? So it's, it's basically Mm -hmm. the uh, rebranded Oppo. So you have all of this stuff going on and it's like, why does the PD get, go bankrupt because they couldn't they literally had to stop selling the nas in the united states and it's like how do you keep rebranding yourself in but you can't make money so they rebrand yourself as a blu-ray player company that also sells this oh this little media player too so but no ability in the united states to rip anything with that media player you're on your own just like plex there you go well, just there's multiple other companies that do lose media players also. Yeah, I right. mean, there's Zdu, there's yep. Dune, there's all, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, but and none of not them had legal issues like Zipedi was. So no, but um, the two companies that had huge legal issues, Kaleidoscape and Zipedi, both had ripping players. Yeah, all the other companies didn't have that. You'd have to manufacture your own version on how to do it, and now that's on you. All I'm doing is producing, a, like, what if you're one of these companies, all I'm doing is giving you a media player that has the ability to play it. I'm not, t- I'm not telling you to rip them. I'm just giving you the ability to play it, a file. That's it. There's nothing illegal with that, right? So you can't stop that. But the two companies that had literal legal issues had ripping players that you put the disc in, it ripped it for you, and spit the disc out. They don't like that. So, you know what I mean? Like, for all you know, you're buying a Z-Do to play your family movies on. Right. Doesn't matter. It's like, I got a, I got family movies as an ISO file. Perfect. <laughs> I got a Z-Do. <laughs> right. Or, so, it's, it's just, you know, like I said, interesting. <sighs> yep. That- so, we're, we're already not going to get to at least half of the, the stuff we have on deck today. <laughs> yeah. So well, we make, can. Make your cuts appropriately because we we're can. 40 minutes in. I know. So, <laughs> so. Uh, are we ready to get to uh, this week's? We we can cook through a few of these, I think. Mm. Um, but are we ready to get to this week's real HT experiences? Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Hopefully during this little intro, nobody gives us a super chat. But if they do, I'll interrupt. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together. I was expecting to come in with music, DJ. I, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> you that can't. you didn't put more work into this. <laughs> I can't. We're monetized now. What are you trying to get us kicked off? You only need like 10 seconds. No, um, I actually... Are you, uh, are, you, are you saying there's now going to be bad blood? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> mm. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> that's my Taylor Swift. Not, that's my knowledge gone. That's it. Done. That's the, that's the extent of it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, DJ, I mean, uh, Steve already let the cat out of the bag a bit in the intro, but uh, yeah. yeah, so I went to go see Taylor Swift, The Errors Tour uh, in Cinemark XD on Sunday. Um, this show was phenomenal. Like, w- whether you like her or not, or whether you like her music or not, this show was unbelievable. The production value that went into this thing... Um, and all I can say is if this thing comes to physical media in the proper way, like, mm. it, you know, if it's done well, because physical media isn't, Not always, DVD. isn't always done well. <laughs> but if this thing comes to 4K Blu-ray with a Dolby Atmos track and all of that stuff, this will be a reference disc that you would show off for audio and video to anybody that walked into your theater. Like, it is unbelievable. Um, you know, like her or not, You know, a lot of people buy discs for the home theater experience. Um, This would definitely be one to have. Um, It's probably better than Evil Dead Rise. (laughs) 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 I don't know. I I mean, I do like me some Evil Dead Rise. But but yeah, like I said, I'm not going to go on and on about it because we have a time crunch. But um, if this thing comes to disc, you you should check it out because it – it is unbelievable the presentation that she puts on. The show she puts on is is 
is incredible. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, I've heard great things about it. I keep checking Kaleidoscape for pre-sale. I definitely want to have this as soon as I can. I was trying to get to it this weekend. Um, pretty busy. I don't know that it'll come to physical media because she's released several concert films that never came to physical media. Mm. They went to like, uh, like Hulu and Netflix and mm-hmm. Disney Plus, things like that. So this may not come to physical. Yeah. Um, now, like you and I kind of talked about very briefly, she's no stranger to putting two coins together. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, it would be a no brainer to put this out on physical. Yeah. But you could say that about any other concert she ever had too. And yeah. so the fact that there was never did come to disc is, you know, puts this into a little bit of question, but they also didn't get theatrical releases. So, I mean, yeah. this is definitely new territory. Um, and, um, you know, and, I think and this is not going to be the last, like now Beyonce just announced she's got her concert film coming. Like, I think we're going to see a lot more of these big shows coming to mm. yeah. theaters, especially with the fact, you know, that like these shows aren't cheap, you know, like, um, tickets to these shows can run into the hundreds and thousands of dollars. And most people can't put that kind of money together to go see a concert. So being able to throw $20 down and go see a pretty good show in a, in a nice theater, you know, I think we'll see a lot more of this from a lot of artists um, yeah. mm. going forward. Um, and, you know, we all kind of praise the Hans Zimmer Blu-ray with the Atmos That's track as being, say, yeah. as being reference. Like if you start to get some of these big show productions in, in that kind of quality, uh, and, and you like music. Like a lot of people just aren't into music as much as they are films. But if you're into that stuff, I think these things are going to be incredible. So Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, I, I mean, I know I, Jen and I have a uh, Def Leppard show on Kaleidoscape that's, I believe it's in, it's in 4K. It might be in yeah. Atmos. I'm not sure. But we, she, that's like one of her favorite bands. And we, you know, we're looking forward to watching that, you know, and, and it is right. a concert night. We did that during COVID. We did the, uh, what is it? Cube? What was the, uh, concert app? I can't we remember. I, yeah. But we did the we same looked, thing. I looked at it too, but and I never bought it. A good concert uh, video in our theaters is like, it's like legit. You have a blast, you know, it's like we did the tailgating up in the kitchen and then went down and, you know, had a, had a great time with it. So, and then from what you're saying, what I've heard other people say, it's like this, was an event like you said you yeah. go there and like people are crazy it's yeah a- it, was, it was again it yeah. was more a concert than a movie yeah. now we went sunday afternoon we weren't there opening night or anything there had already been three days of shows um and i'm not i mean the con there was a few people there um maybe 25 percent full but not you know not like some of the earlier shows but yeah mm. these were like concerts they weren't movies you know right. people were up they were dancing they were you know had their phones out they were you know doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, like I said, I think the theaters oh, we're taking are them, going we're putting to, them in, taking them down. Shane Lee. Wow. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Shane. Um, Shane Lee himself, $5 on behalf of the Swifties. But so. I think, you know, and, you know, again, I said I wasn't going to go too far into this, but, you know, she went directly, she made her deal directly with AMC for this. There was yeah. no other kind of middleman involved. And then it got licensed out to other theaters. But for theaters that are struggling these days to put, you know, butts in the seat, um, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, this is another way to bring people in to the theaters. And yeah. I, I think it's a super smart move. And oh, I, yeah. I can't but, imagine based on how much money this is already doing that we won't see every artist trying to do this yeah. uh, going forward, you know. Quello um, is Joseph. Quello, uh, yeah. jo- Joseph. Why am I calling him Joseph? Joe. Joseph. Yeah, Holtzel. I think that's what it was. Yeah, Quello is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, was the uh, concert music app that we were using. Um, but like I said to you when we were talking about this, it's like I loved like even just the marketing idea. I know. I mean, she's probably making crazy money off of this. It's off of her, oh, yeah. and it's a great idea. But her, when you see her come out and her her initial motivation for this was was for the for the fans that can't get to her shows because her shows sell out like this, it, you know, like in two seconds, it's, if you get to see her show, you're like, it's, it's, you're, you feel like you won the lottery because they're so looked, hard to get tickets for. I looked just for kicks the other day, just to, just to have an idea, you know, the second leg of this tour that she's got coming up, most of the shows have like 1% of their tickets remaining. Like they're not complete sellouts, mm. but you know, there's some really 
basically bad seats that are still available, and they're still nine hundred dollars a seat. That's yeah. Uh, you well, know they're I mean? probably not and available. People bought them, and they're, those are the ones that are for sale. Like it's sold it might out. Be. And that's and you're what's right, available. Because be, I don't know what the what right. the tickets prices were originally. Um, but um, yeah, you're right. These are probably being sold back. Um, I know people that and, have gone to like Super Bowls. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, on thousands. the on a whim. Yeah. Right. And they're like, yeah, you want to go this year? We'll go this year. Okay, they go this year. Right. They couldn't get Taylor Swift concert tickets. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, you have the means to be able to get Super Bowl tickets right? when you want them. You couldn't get a Taylor Swift's ticket. So, when you get to go, you're like, oh, my God. It's like, I got to, like, Meg got to go because they knew somebody that knew somebody that was working. And it's like, okay, we're, you know, it was, I don't know what it was. But they they had a group of people going. And, like, Meg's friends like, can I go? And, like, I, well, I don't, them, you know, you don't even love, know who you're going with. So it's jobs uh, as ushers and things like that. Right. <laughs> to yeah. Do that. Yeah. But, um, so it, that's why, yeah. and that's why she, well, that's why she says she's doing this. It's to give the opportunity. And that's why you'll see all those people there with you, John. In the theater, so you're surrounded. I'm telling you. <laughs> like I said, I was joking off show uh, before we started, but I would definitely go again if it wasn't for the fact that it's super sketch for uh, a white guy my age to be alone in the theater <laughs> watching the well, Taylor Swift movie. So I don't. I um, mean, I don't. I mean, I don't think color had anything to do with it. <laughs> it's like well, any, any guy your age, <laughs> any like, any guy in their fifties, I guess. Yeah. But it's like when I used um, to take Meg to the midnight showing of the Twilight movies. And it yeah. was like just me and Meg, and I look around, and most of it's like the moms taking them at midnight. And you're like, yeah, my wife took ladies. all our kids to those. <laughs> yeah, nope, not me. Um, but yeah, so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully, it does. Hopefully, it drops physically somewhere sometime soon, maybe for Christmas. Um, yeah, see, see where it goes. So, all right. Um, is that, is that all we have about that? Or Steve, you've been awfully quiet. What are you just, he's just trying to find ways to make fun of me. No, no, (laughs) it's, it's, I mean, she may be playing uh, Glastonbury next summer. There's been some suggestion she will, in which case I'll see her for free. Um, but, um, but I, I don't know whether that's going to happen or not. I mean, I'd, I'd give it a watch. Oh, when you do the cut, you you work there, right? Is that what happened? Um, well, yeah, I do. I provide legal services for the security guard. So if anyone right. gets arrested, then I... But no, that hasn't happened in 10 well, years. Well, if you get a plus so four, it would be out. cheaper for me to fly to London and go with you than it would be yeah. to buy tickets here in the States. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Quite. So. Well, you, you don't mind coming to spend a couple of days at a muddy field in uh, in the middle of England? You are welcome to come I'd, along, John. I'd be... Yeah, yeah, i tell you what, you'd see some sights you've never seen before. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's never seen it. It is a different world, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, Steve, you think you can cook through this one? Seeing it's not exactly yep. horror, but it's a great movie, and I don't want to skip. I, I actually don't want to skip anything this week, so let's hit this one quickly. There it is. Uh, okay, so this is Transformers Rise of the Beasts yeah. know, on 4K UHD disc. Just to break up the horror, you know, it, it might be October. We're not just exclusively horror on this show, as much as I might try. I am. Um, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. month, so I'm super, trying to be. Super quick. So I, I saw this on 4K disc. The first, this is the second time I'd seen it. I saw it on a screener a little while back, 1080p, only stereo sound. Thought it was a bit samey like the other ones, you know, just replace one guy for Shia LaBeouf and away you go. Um, didn't think much of it, but it came out in 4K disc. I thought I'll pick it up and I'll give it another go. Um, each once again, the delivery system actually <laughs> did make a difference. I, I just don't know what's happened. I really enjoyed this. I in, instead told of George, you, I really did. No, I, I got to go back it's and find a, the video of like when I was talking about it, and you're like, yeah, it didn't. It, yeah, <laughs> well, this is the thing. This shows that that, that you know the, the presentation was great. It looks amazing. Sounds amazing. Um, it's awesome. The HDR on the various um, vehicles just looks great. The, the laser bolts that they fire, you know, actually glow. So, yeah, Steve, it's, really, it's better really nice. than doing this in the police station? Getting yeah, nice and close uh, to your uh, computer uh, screen? <laughs> yeah. In the middle of an interview. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got go it on. Here go. <laughs> go get them. Look at, yeah. I got that 45-degree field of view. Your nose is three inches <laughs> off your laptop. <laughs> 
it looks just sellotaped to my head. Like, you know. it, um, so it was, yeah, so it's really good. It's, it's yeah. a heck of a disc, and the bass on it's really, really nice. And, it, and, it, and again, it's that paramount bass where it's strong and it's muscular, mm. but it never tips over into the rattle, which it's you better can sometimes than the Godfather. get. So, yeah, well, <laughs> there, you, there you go. You watch out. We'll lose Paul Hurt. <laughs> He'll go again. Um, so yeah, no, it, it's really good. I recommend yeah. the disc. I really yeah. enjoyed the film. That it's it's another one in the vein of Bumblebee. You really mm. like the kind of the reimagining of it slightly, and this is really good. So yeah, I I really really enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely good. So to keep it short. It's good. Yeah, it is good. It <laughs> is. I think it's a a good mix of the older Transformers movies and the Bumblebee. Yeah. Good, you know, nice mm -hmm. story, heartfelt story. Great HDR, great Atmo. I mean, mm. it's just it's a, just a fun home theater disc for sure. So, all yeah, right, one hundred percent, definitely recommend it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have. Uh, let's see what. Oh, yeah, we got another quick one from John here. Mm. Uh, and you ready, John? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, this was Coraline on yeah. 4K disc. Um, 4K UHD with Dolby Atmos. Um, this is the, I just got this disc the other day. I've been watching it for a while because I'd heard really great things about it. Um, the Steelbook went on sale for like 20 bucks the other day, so I picked it up. Um, man, they were right. What a gorgeous disc this is. This <laughs> this move, this move film looked incredible. It sounded incredible. Um, I had seen the movie once before, I think. I don't even couldn't remember. Uh, it's, it seemed familiar. Uh, yeah, it was, actually, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had no idea this was based on a Neil Gaiman uh, graphic novel, I guess. Oh, really? And, I didn't uh, know yeah. that either. And it shows. Like, this is, it's obviously, it's an animated film. It is not for young kids. Mm. Like, this is really? Some, pretty rough themes to it. Have you not seen it? No. DJ? No, no. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's 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 a little adultish. Uh, I mean, it's not like super over the top, but I can see where really small kids would yeah. get pretty creeped out by this. Um, but this is, like I said, it is gorgeous. Um, it, it, you know, it's animated, so it, it just so vibrant. It, it In the world that this thing takes place in, it's, um, you know, you've got flowers, you've got things blooming all over the place and um, this um, dream kind of dream world that she's in. Um, it, it just looks fantastic. So um, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, if you've got a 4k player or physical media in any way, buy this disc, it, it is well worth it. It is beautiful. So nice. All yeah. right. Uh, let's see. Let me pull that down. Uh, quickly. We have uh uh, Ariel is asking uh, DJ what Def Leppard concert and it is um, Def Leppard Hysteria at the O2 so hmm. I'm showing my phone here I just grabbed it pulled it up um, what year it's it just says at the O2 so oh, I think that's say, the we place went I, yeah 88 yeah 89 <laughs> somewhere around there yeah I, is, I saw that tour um, yeah in, 87 88 somewhere around this there. no this is way after it's hysteria yeah. at the yeah well, at, it wouldn't be at the like, o2 because the o2 is the um is a massive thing in london which yeah, was the millennium okay. though it came out so in 2018 yeah so it's an hour oh, 45 okay. minutes okay. it's it came out in 2018 let me tell you oh you dts go. master audio 5.1 it is 4k hdr and um I, I saw some clips of it yeah so we were like O two, they look awfully old for because at first when I read it, I thought it was O two as in the year, but it's 22, at the yeah. the O and then little two. I didn't know that. So but yeah, they do look older, but it does look fun. It does look really good. And that was the one that I told you I saw at Cedia. It was playing oh, on yeah. on the big screen while I was standing there talking to Andre. And I was like, This is awesome. And he did the same thing. He pulled it up on his phone and he's like, This one. And I was like, perfect. And I bought it right there. So um, but yeah, so. It's it's that one. Uh, thanks, Eru. Uh, let's see. What do we got next? No, no, I don't have a touch screen. So why did I do that? All right, we ready for this one, guys? This one might take yep. us a little while, and then we'll we'll cook through some more to get to the final topic. Okay. But um, I've been excited all week for this one, so let's uh, let's get right to it. Netflix, uh, the fall of the House of Usher in uh, the Dolby Vision 4K, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. 
Um, I've got my trusty little Edgar Allan Poe book here with all of his works. <laughs> Broke that out. Um, so came, I've been, I started to go through some of that. Um, I've always loved Poe, uh, growing up. I don't know why it just, he resonated with me and Jen and I are watching this and I said something to her. <laughs> she looks at me with that same look that I give her when she tells me, when I tell, when she tells me something about like art or color or something. Right. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so I told her, did you know that Edgar Allan Poe? And she looked at me and went, and like, you could teacher. see the <laughs> F-bombs in her eyes. Like, are you effing like me? I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> she was an English teacher for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I got some news for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is this guy named Poe. <laughs> yeah, this is Edgar uh, Allen. So, um, yeah, so me being, but that's how excited I am about it. Um, Bruce Greenwood is phenomenal. Uh, Mary McDonald is off awesome. I mean, just yeah. It took me a, it took me oh a bit to, to figure out who she was. Oh, I knew right away, and and I was like, oh, that's President such and such yeah, from and, Battlestar Galactica. Well, but it took me a bit. I watched at least two and, episodes, thinking, who is yeah. that woman? <laughs> she and the First Lady in Independence Day. Oh, okay. she she died. She yeah. sorry, spoilers. <laughs> I, I've I've wiped that movie from my memory. Yeah. So yeah, I she don't. was, and that's how I described it to Jen. Um. I was like, you know, Independence Day. She was the first lady. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, she's, I and I, oh, man. I, it's that, who's the, um, who's the investigator that's taught, that they're having the conversation in front, I forget uh, his name. Uh, the older what, actor Olgi, or the Olgi. younger Olgi. actor? The older yeah, the one. Actor or the, character the older name. version? Um, yeah, but oh, I can't remember his, his name casting either. and his voice of them sitting in the old house. Okay, this isn't a spoiler. They they're right. sitting there talking to each other. In between Bruce Greenwood's, he's got this texture to his voice, and then it, I, I I I just felt like the texture in their voices were so complimentary. Like they were different, and so you're coming at it from a different perspective. It it just just that alone that their voices and their conversation there it's an amazing home theater experience just listening to that dialogue and the gravelly voices and the text oh i love it um the hdr i mean let me let you guys talk too what did you guys think now watch this i didn't like it how many how many episodes are you guys in i am done five i uh, i have three more i think um, i might be around there maybe one more than john yeah, maybe. yeah. I've I've done three. I've done the first three, um, only because of you mentioning it, DJ. I mean, you put on um, Twitter that you're a big fan of Poe, and I thought, well, the Teletubbies are coming back, and you know, it's <laughs> Tinky Winky and obviously La La and uh, yeah, you know, Dipsy. Poe, that's fine. Then I realised that's not what you meant. Um, so uh, see, yeah. that's how we did it in rehearsal. See why that was so much yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the baby from the sun is having a baby. So if that doesn't yeah. make you feel old. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, back on track. The other day. Yeah, so I I didn't, I, I mean, I didn't know. Edgar Allan Poe does not resonate with me because I never did it as a kid. I mm. never, that wasn't my horror fiction growing up. Mine was Stephen King, Clive Barker, even Peter Benchley, you know, things like that. Th those were the, the books that I was reading when I was sort of growing up. Um, and Edgar Allan Poe isn't, that big here isn't taught in schools, certainly not the schools that I went to. Um, and so I, I mean, my, my only exposure to it is the telltale heart cross the Raven. And that's because of the Simpsons. So <laughs> literally that was my only exposure to Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so I didn't know what to expect of this. If you said, Oh, the fall of the house of Usher, I knew that was literature, but I couldn't tell you where, who wrote it. Okay. Um, so I, I went into this only because of what you'd said about the home theater. And I, with some trepidation, I didn't know anything about it. And, um, at the end of the first episode, I mean, the home the home theater stuff is is phenomenal. I mean, mm. there's no no ifs and buts about that at all. Um, but I thought the story at the end of the first episode was very overwrought. Everything was deadly serious. Mm. You know, I am death, and everything I do dies, and all my kids are dead, and it's all a bit wow. Okay, come on, guys, take a chill pill, mate. You know, relax. Wow. Might never happen, you know. Um, and but I, I thought, and, and there was a lot of information in that first episode. Mm. If you don't know anything about it, and I didn't, 
So and, and there's time periods and there's time jumps and they're going backwards and forwards. And so by the end of it, I was thinking, yeah, I don't know. Then you get the quite cool ending. Um, but I thought episodes two and three were much better. Mm. The story is clearer. You see where it's going, I think. And and it and it becomes sorry to use the phrase, very episodic, but in the mm. right way, you know, okay, something's gonna happen at the end of each of these episodes, and we know what that is. Um, right. and so I so it's good. Um, but yeah, so I, I am enjoying it. I'm looking forward to number four um, or episode four. Um, but yeah, the home theater's just bananas on it. Oh. I mean, the storm sequence in the first episode is is just like you think your roof's going to well, come we'll, in. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me let's mm. John yeah, go, summarize, go, sorry, go, yeah. well, and then I yeah, got again. a screen grab of that, like I put out. So mm-hmm. we'll talk about that. I say at the risk of sounding repetitive, you know, like I said, the home theater. <laughs> this is uh, again for a streamer. This is pretty top notch um mm. it, it looks and sounds phenomenal um for for those that aren't aware this is the fifth series that mike flanagan has had on netflix uh this is the last series of his deal with them um i have enjoyed almost all the other series more than this one to this point really? um yeah um i can't take a, a single thing away from the the home theater aspect of this um but i've found it to be Fairly predictable. Hmm. Um, I, 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 I'm not as big of a Poe fan as you, DJ. I mean, again, I'm aware of who he is. I, I don't know the stories of him. I, my knowledge is about the same as yours, Steve. <laughs> I know he wrote The Raven. I know The Telltale Heart. Um, but I feel like the fact, and, and I, I don't want to spoil things for people that haven't watched it, but um, the fact that in every episode, the two of them sitting in that house foreshadow the person that is going to <laughs> meet their fate <laughs> at the end of that episode. Right. I find a little bit too. Hey, you um, don't like when they do that. Like, you too know, predictable. Right. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, he Just, has a, yeah. he has a vision. Okay. This is the one that's going to have their thing by the end of the episode. And then, and you know, at, he's got six kids. We've got six episodes of something happening to one of them every episode. And then we'll have a wrap up, you know, at, at the end. Right. Um, so highlights real, but, <laughs> But I'm I'm intrigued to find out what the motivation is. Like uh, Carla Gugino, I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, we never can get Gugino. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's great. the thread. She's the thread through the whole series. Mm. And wh- why? That's that's my thing. So right. like I'm I am intrigued by it all. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm not enjoying it in any way because I am. But mm. I have found Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, I found both of those to be more entertaining than this. Um, a lot of people think Midnight Mass is his best show. That's actually probably his. I like that one the least mm-hmm. out of all of them. Uh, I would put this number three so far. Um, but all that being said, I think Hill House was uh, was a banger from start to finish. Like it was just a great series. Blind right. Manor. I felt the same way through six episodes. I'm like, okay, this is okay. But then those last two episodes really brought it home for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that the same thing happens here. Yeah. Uh, because I watched Bly Manor thinking, well, this is not as good as Hill House was, you know? And, yeah. And now I'm thinking the same thing about this in comparison to those other two. Um, so I think, like, I've got three episodes left. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the last couple, um, yeah. like I said, it really kind of nail it home for me. But right now I'm finding it a little formulaic because you just, like, it's tele- they telegraph to you, you know, 10 minutes into the episode, roughly what yeah. you're going to see at the end of that episode. And I'm finding that a little bit too and, on yeah. the nose. You know? And you, you, you've um, been consistent with stuff like that. Like, yeah. we when, uh, I mean, in our lives, like you don't like it when they'll do a prequel and you're like, well, I know this character is going to make it all the way through the right. movie. So all these death defying stunts they're doing, it's no fun. Right. Well, and and I, I, I don't, mind, I hate but. it when a TV series, when any series Shows you the ending of the show, show in the first five minutes and then wraps back 24 hours earlier. Right. That, I know like, you do. always yeah. irritates me. I, so, I don't like it. What, I, th- um, what so. I think could be interesting about this, and I don't want to spoil the show. I Obviously, I haven't gotten to the end of it. But one of my favorite parts and what I've always been fascinated with with Edgar Allan Poe is like his stories, his his poems, his horror, stuff like this. It's all based in it's all psychological. Okay, right. so like you both know Telltale Heart, and it's like there wasn't anything. It was him. Right. It was his heart. And I remember when I learned that in school, it, it's like what we're in like seventh grade or something when we did this. And I'm like, 
That's amazing because you know, like when you feel guilty about something, you can hear your own heartbeat. And he made right. a story about that, right? And it's like, and it's fascinating. It's like the floorboards and this and that. So, what does that mean for this for this show, right? right. If you're taking Edgar Allan Poe and it's like the psychological thriller of things aren't exactly what they seem. Like, wh- how does this work out? What are they going for here? And that's what I'm fascinated with. Um, I was like, I was reading on IMDb and I guess, it, it, you know, you're reading a couple of things and they're like, oh, in episode two, you look above the bar and there's a crow there, which is a reference to the right, raven. There's tons of Easter eggs no kidding. to, to <laughs> it's in, like, in the show. That was like me but... talking to Jen. <laughs> like, right. yeah. But th- there's tons of Easter eggs. There's tons of, and it's like, now I haven't. Because isn't re- his wife's name, his wife's name is Annabelle Lee, which is a is, big. Uh, and they, yeah. yeah. And, and um, then. Carla, um, the name she uses on her driver's license is Clem or something like that, mm-hmm. which goes back. So yeah. there's tons of tons of Easter egg, uh, which you would yeah, expect murder, in a show based know. on Edgar Allan Poe's work. Yeah, <laughs> you would think um, there'd be a lot of Easter eggs to Carla's his work, name. Know? The the that main antagonist, I guess you would call it, right? Um, her name is like Werner or something, which is uh, an acronym for uh, Raven. So okay. that that's another one that I read. Um, so, yeah. but it, 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 to me, it's just, it, it's just fascinating. I love, right. and like I said to you earlier, John, it's like, I love how they're taking like real world stuff that's pertinent to today. They're putting right. it in an Edgar Allan Poe type story from hundreds of years ago, or a hundred something years ago. 150 years yeah. ago. Probably. So you're like, yeah. how, and then you're making, I mean, you're making it. It's modern because you got the self. It's just, but it's right. spooky. It's it's gross. It's graphic. Steve, you got to be loving that. I was hoping you were watching this. I'm like, <laughs> they, I mean, it is just they threw a Thor hammer in there. What are yeah. the odds? And you wouldn't say I'll get Hemsworth to give me another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not only that. It's, awesome. it's like he's going. I mean, it was the, the it's. I don't want to spoil it, but it's like you're going after a certain thing with the mirror mirror. Right. <laughs> Which is what everybody <laughs> says, right? I thought that was hysterical. I'm like, oh my God. But it, yeah, it's so good. But let's let's get to the scene that I put out. So this, we've all seen it. It's in episode one. This is the two characters walking down the street. And this scene starts at about 16 minutes of episode one. And it is probably, and I know if you're watching on YouTube right now, you're like, it's, it's very dark. dark. Yeah. Right. In in your room, this won't be this dark. There's a little more detail in it. But the way the lightning keeps going off, and like I said on Twitter, I'm like, did Carl Ellsworth write this scene? <laughs> like <laughs> the thunder in this scene, it's like you can hear it at the like the rear of your room, but then you'll hear another thunder clap at the front corner of the opposite corner of your room. And that's just going on this entire time. But the way the, these characters walking down the street in the rain, thunder and lightning, and you get that when they're walking down the street and it's dark, it's almost like it, monochromatic. It's almost black and white. There's like little to no color because it's, it's just a dark night. But then I had to take make video of this scene to be able to snap these two pictures because when the lightning comes off, when you watch it real time, the the vibrancy, all the color just jumps out at you, but only for like a split second of the lightning. And then it goes away. And then you're back to that dark ominous of them just walking in the dark. But it's, I mean, there's tons of detail, even in the dark. Um, It's it, 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 to me, it's like, probably one of the scenes of the year home theater scenes of the year because the atmos on this and then the hdr on this and it just it was absolutely stunning and i jen and i watched it twice while we were watching the show and then she went upstairs and i watched it a few times and made these images (laughs) and stuff but it it was it's so much fun and it's a great way to show off your theater too it's it was Mm. awesome what'd you guys think no i agree um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree. It was awesome. Um, yeah. You know, again, I hate not to go back to other series, but going back to Midnight Mass, there's a similar you know, the storm sequence at the end of episode one. And I still go to that scene um, now when I want to hear <laughs> something new on my system because it, it is, um, again, for a streaming show, it is yeah. unbelievable, the Atmos mm. in that storm. And this one I felt was very similar. 
Uh, the other yeah. one's a little bit longer than this scene was. Um, so it, it goes for a bit, but, um, you sent me that one when it first was out, didn't you? You told I, me I to talked go about to that. it multiple yeah. times. And yeah. I, I don't know if you ever watched it. I think it, I, but did I did watch that um, episode. I don't know. I didn't follow up though. Yeah. Um, but all, like I said, and all of these shows that he's done have been kind of praised on, on here for having great Atmos effects. But, um, but yeah, this, this scene was, was pretty great. Yeah. And I mean, and there's so many more as, as the series goes, like mm -hmm. all the episodes, uh, episode two is insane. Um, just the, the visuals, like I said, the gore and the, the detail that you're getting, it's, it's really is just a, it's an amazing, you know, home theater experience all the way through. And, mm -hmm. uh, even in the slow parts, just looking in the background again, all those Easter eggs, like we were talking about. Right. And you're just looking everywhere. It's just a great, great, you know, home theater experience. So, um, yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, the, the, I think it's worth making the point that it, the, whilst that storm is really powerful and there's a great scene, there are bits in every episode that actually that that, yeah. that aren't as showy, but just as effective. So the nightclub scene when you've got the the, the, the sprinklers and stuff, that's yeah. all you know nicely yeah. kind of thing. There's some bass in the in the the music in that, which is quite nice. Yep. And I did like in in episode three the um the, the chimps, the noise yeah. the chimp, just little, just as you can hear again, it discreetly in the different oh, in the different parts of the room, very, very sort of soft and 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 there, but they're almost calling to one another, yeah. and you can kind of hear them moving through. So I thought that was really nice as well. Um, and again, to talk about your you you said about the two guys, Bruce Greenwood and the other chap in the room. The monologue that Bruce Greenwood gives about lemons in episode three. Oh, um, yeah, that was, was awesome. just absolutely awesome. Yes, so oh, good. That's, it's, that's so, that that ought to be in an Emmy sort of yeah. highlight reel somewhere because that yeah. that was awesome. And it looks like that's a one -er. It looks he's done that in one go. That there is there are no cuts yeah. in that. They did not cut away until you get the reaction to the whole thing. It's and, and I thought yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, and the the way it's like, doesn't the shot just like keep? Grad, like coming Feels in slower way. and slower like <laughs> yeah. his head is getting bigger and bigger on the screen because the shot you're getting mm. in tighter on him and mm. it, it just is I, mean, I love that we jen and i talked about that a couple of days after we saw it and we were something came up and we're like yeah that's what that's like i mean just the you know lemons and the way no and you just go from there and it's like oh my god and he has um I think the the in investigator, the the U.S. District Attorney, right? That's yeah, what he I'm is. Trying yeah. Find, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to find. I'm looking it up now. Yeah. Prosecutor it's Carl Lumley. That's who I thought it was. Yeah. But it, yeah. His just young... so we can stop saying. Oh, and we forgot to mention um, Mr. Mark Hamill. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> in this, um, who's awesome? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, he's the. He's the. Uh, uh, the the courageous um, defense attorney. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I I see. I think he's been miscast in this. Yeah, really. I think he kind of because it well because every time he comes on screen, you're like, it's Mark Hamill, right? And you kind of and I then you're slightly taken out of it. I I think he's this is stunt casting. No, I think he, he plays the Joker. Just, you know. He, well, no, I know, but he yeah, just, yeah. He, Every time you see me, like that's Mark Hamill. That's There's Luke Mark Skywalker. Hamill. Yeah, <laughs> and you're not thinking, oh, like you know that that part oh, should I have am. gone to a, you know, to a, a someone more schlubby, someone more more creepy, someone with more kind of thing. Whereas oh, he no. just stands there, and I I don't find oh. him very effective. Steve, you're and I like Mark Hamill. You're, you're typecasting the poor guy. Like he <laughs> no, can't do anything no, except hold a lightsaber. <laughs> well, sounds good. It works for me. <laughs> yeah. um, Apparently, but he, he does he does seem a bit. Just a I little bit him. out of place him. slightly in this, but it's he's still, you know, it's still very, very good. But I Jen noticed I that he has that. sometimes he has two gloves on, sometimes he has one. It's like very there's oh, he I, I think his that. character is very cryptic. Like how like what is mm. going on here? I think a lot of the characters mm. are very cryptic. Yeah, but um, none of this is none of this is real world. All of this is metaphysical, isn't it? None of this I, is 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 I mean that's it what is I mean. a thinly veiled political dig at certain famous political families, which I won't say any more about because we're not political on this show. Um, but it, 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 the whole thing is taking place in another world. This is not this is not the world we recognise. 
Whether they're in purgatory, I don't know, but I suspect so. Right. And like, we don't know. None of this that's, is, that's what I'm saying yeah. about Poe. We don't know yeah. any of that stuff. Mm. We don't know, like, what is this? Where is this? Is it real? Is it, you know, is it, mm. like, I, I don't want to give it away if you don't know, you know, like, there. I have mm. some theories, but it's like, what can happen? Who knows? I don't, it's, mm. it's, that's what makes it so much fun. And we won't know until we get to the end of it. And some people mm. might have been listening and some people listening might be like, I've finished it. I know it. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> you know, which is great. And it's like, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, but that to me is what's fascinating about this type of, mm. like I, I said to John in a text, I'm like, as like of all the regurgitated stuff we have of movies that I do love. I love it when they're like, Hey, another fast and the furious. Perfect. So much fun. But when you can take something like this and you take like Poe's writings as an inspiration and do something like they're doing here, I'm like, this is creative entertainment. This is like mm -hmm. truly like artwork. That's like, it's going to make you angry. It's going to make you this. It's going to, I mean, it's just, that's what I love about it. It's just, it's so much well fun. when they when they treat it so seriously and throw so much money at it as well is what i find so so incredible you know they're not mm. just this is not the tv we all grew up with this no, is your greatest american chips. hero and you you know you 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 know your cardboard guy. backdrops Fall and guy. Well, quite all your a team you know you know the stuff that was that was so dallas you know, um, oh it kind of is dallas yeah <laughs> well, yeah, well, Dallas mixed with Game of Thrones. Yeah, it, and, and it's sort of it, and so that they've thrown the money at it, and the time that it must have taken to put this together, which it, and then yeah. give us a top notch home theater experience yeah. as well. It's great. And, and but tell it, me this, guys. Okay, just tell, tell me because I was talking to a friend of mine about this this morning, and he hadn't seen it, and he was like, "Do I want to see it?" And he will watch stuff. Oh, he's got a fifty-five inch TV in his lounge but we'll watch stuff on an iPad right now. What he will do is it, at night, kids go to bed, he will lie in bed with the iPad on his chest and he will watch stuff. And he was saying, so do I want to see it? And I'm thinking, I don't know if it would resonate as much watching it like that or at all even. Yeah. If you're not a Poe fan and he knows nothing about yeah. Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe, I'm not sure he's even seen The Simpsons. Um, and, I, and I'm wondering because you know that well, is your go-to after if you don't yeah. know go to the Simpsons yeah, yeah. well quite that's it that's the best that, that, there's a, a a life hack right there um, so it, so I don't know whether it would be worth recommending like to someone that, that doesn't know much about it and is only going to see it small screen I don't know well spatial like, audio so far mm. for me without the home theater experience I don't know if it's compelling enough story wise to watch mm. You know, like a great story, you know, we're going to talk about the delivery system again, but if it's a great story, you can mm. watch it on your iPad and it'll still be a great story. Right. right. Um, mm. To me, so far, this has been more about the home theater part of it than the yeah. story. Um, For me, it's but, both. But like I said, mm. it, it, you know, it it depends on what happens in the last three episodes for me because I, I don't mm. know how it ends. And it could really turn because I, I've felt this way before about shows. Yeah. And then, like I said, Bly Manor, I felt the same way. And then when it was all said and done, I think it was my favorite out of the bunch, just based on two episodes. Like, I could go back mm. and do a rewatch of just episode seven and eight, and that's it. I don't even need to watch the rest of the show. Right. So, mm. um, it, it, so it depends uh, on how this thing wraps mm. up, I think. Um, but So, to be continued, then, we need to uh, yeah. put a pin in this one then and come back to this then when we've all seen it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be done tonight. Next week. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, one more thing on home theater part though, and to get to, like you said, you, you know, they're putting the money into it, but I think Netflix mm. is also putting the research into how to stream a quality, uh, HDR and Atmos experience, because if you put this on in your room, um, somebody had asked, uh, on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter that like, what, what volume do you watch at? And it's like, this to me, I, on Netflix, I can't remember the last time I had to bump up the volume to match like what a physical release would be like. And if somebody came in and this this release in particular, you wouldn't know if it's a physical release or if it's a streaming mm. because the volume is fairly high. And the dynamics, the way that the, the way they're utilizing sound. That, so I have to imagine that if you 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 can't get away with stuff streaming that you can get away with in physical. And Paul can probably talk about this. Maybe we'll add it to our conversation in the 24 hour show, but like 
to get good dynamics on streaming, you probably have to allow a little more time between the sounds to allow your your system, meaning because it's you don't want to compress it, as opposed to if a drummer on a physical release, like say like Whiplash, and you go... Like physically, you're not going to get any muddiness there. It's just going to be awesome, right? But when you stream that, you could get some compression that's going to blend some things together. Netflix has got to be figuring out a way that it's like, we're going to hit them hard with this bass here. We're going to allow the room to reset. And we're talking milliseconds here, right? And then all of a sudden we'll hit them with this. And it gives you that, oh my God, the dynamics are amazing because they do seem that way with this and i think they're doing the same thing with the video as well where they know how to shoot this properly and it gives you that same feeling you get when you put in a physical disc there's it, and they've been at it a while we've been talking about it for a while that they've got some of the best production quality them and apple tv um right. apple tv i think actually they just boost their their bit rate because they can because it's their stuff and they're on their um if you're using their 4k players but you know what i mean so it's like they've figured it out other people you know they're not so much i mean we're looking at amazon going sometimes it's good other times you're like what same the thing, heck happened yeah. max is the same yeah and it's like but max they put their stuff out physically and it's amazing because that you know right. one of it's awesome so you can see what they're doing netflix here it's like they've just nailed this streaming home theater experience and and i i mean we think about it why are they doing that? It's for us. You know, where we keep saying we're like this small niche market, but it's like they're doing it for us. Because if you're watching this on your uh, iPad or your laptop, you're not getting that what we what we right. get. So mm. um I that's and I that's why I love stuff like this. And thank you, Netflix. Mm. <laughs> Um, so we've got just a couple of very quickly, you've got some new people, I think, in the chat. Okay. Um, think Vibe Home Media. Saying made it to a live show finally. So hi, Vibe Welcome. Home Media. Jump yeah. right in. The water's warm. Um, and then I think only where I'm standing. Like, yep. Yeah. Vibe well, quite did that a little bit. Yeah. Um, we also stop drinking the diet coke there, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got um, yeah, the go. Tech Easy Tech as well. Yeah, you? yeah. How you doing, buddy? So uh, yeah, hey guys. So uh, yeah, welcome, uh, welcome along. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, and there's been some news broken in the chat here about Oppenheimer, uh, 22nd yeah. over there. I think 21st for us or something, or vice versa, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Jordan has uh, more breaking UK physical media news. Looks like Oppenheimer is releasing physically in the UK on the 22nd of November. And then uh, Mikey Schramm is hitting us with, looks like November 21st for for the U.S. or for us, that would be that be, would be a Sunday. It should yeah, be. Yeah, that's probably the twenty like third. Probably. Yeah. Right? So but mm. I don't know. Um, I still nobody said seen... there was going to be math. I don't blame him. So. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially with a film like Oppenheimer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I uh, I still haven't seen it. I still have not got to see it. The first oh. time I see it will be in Cinema George. Oh so, man. Never mind. Have you seen okay, Barbie? Right. Yet? We, are, we are running short on time, guys. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, yeah let's, we got. Let's cook. Yeah, what do we got left? We got uh, yeah, we, we got, got thirty quite a minutes. Few, but I'll go through these. I'll go through these. All right, quick. let me. Uh, mine, mine will be quick. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Another. Uh, this is a fun one. Going yeah. back in time. Oop, wrong one. Yeah, you just got rid of me. <laughs> Killed John. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. buddy. <laughs> I brought All you right. back though. <laughs> you brought me back. Uh, Lost Boys. Four uh, K UHD. Um, I got to look at my notes here to see if this had Atmos or not. I no. Mean, uh, DTS no, it did Master not. It had at most. It did not have Dolby Vision, um, and uh, yeah, uh, just picked up this disc as well. Um, hadn't seen this movie probably since '87 or so when it came out. Um, I, I mean, oh. maybe once since then. It had been a long time since I since I've seen quick, this. Quick um, correction. Sorry about that, John. Uh, Jordan 22nd. says the twenty second is a Wednesday, so we he would. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mike was right. Mike was it's right. And you're us, getting yeah. it on the 22nd for some reason, which is an That's odd day. Wednesday release. That is yeah. really unusual. Yeah. yeah. So mm. nobody's mm. at fault here. Just unusual numbers. Yeah. Dates. <laughs> um, Back to anyway, the Lost yeah, Boys, John. Yeah. Just to do this real quick. Um, you know, this is an 80s movie um, mm. and it is an 80s movie. <laughs> like I forgot oh how 80s God. this movie was. In excess? Uh, oh. But it was so much fun. Wasn't it? Again, if you haven't seen this movie in a while, um, 
this was a blast. Um, I, I thought it looked great. Um, yeah. I thought it sounded great. I mean, they did a great job with this. Um, now, again, I hadn't seen it in a while, so I didn't own the Blu-ray. I don't even know if I own the DVD of this, so um, I haven't seen it. I mean, I, I'm sure I saw this in the theater back in the day, but I haven't seen it you know, look this way since then. I had the um, soundtrack in my car. Did the, you? Yeah, the tape, <laughs> yeah. not the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, a lot of fun. I'm sure uh, we've all seen it. Uh, but if you haven't seen it in a while, um, and, and you're of a certain age, give it another go because it's it's super yeah. fun. Um, the flyby very, very of the 80s. carnival. Like, some, oh. like the montages, you know, between like Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Jason Patrick. Some of those like oh. longing glances back and forth uh, with the hair whipping around is is pretty 80s. Oh, my God. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, Jamie Gertz. Uh, Jamie Gertz, yep. Uh, dressed like Prince through half the movie. Um, so <laughs> it was uh, yeah. definitely, definitely a choice. But I think I it watched is, it last Halloween too, Chris. Yeah. Chris says That's I watched it last Halloween. Halloween. It came yeah. out on yeah. disc. Yeah, DJ talked think, about it, I know. Yeah, I did too. I think I did as well. Or did certainly I, I had the 4K disc. So yeah, yeah. I think I think I did. But um, I just picked yeah, it up because no, it was 10 bucks, The uh, you know, oh, it's great about a week or so ago. Yeah. And um, yeah. I had to pick That's it awesome. up. I'm still waiting on Poltergeist. That was out of stock, but they let me buy oh, it anyways. Another one. Um, so I'm supposed to get mm. it in about a week or so. I think we watched both another of those greatest. last year. Yeah, they both came out like the same day, the same yeah. week last year. Um, mm. yep. And I didn't pick up either one of Ugh. them, but they were both 10 bucks on Prime Day uh, a couple well, of weeks ago. So I bought both of them. Yeah. So yep. um, wait, waiting on, like I said, waiting on Poltergeist. I'll have that one as soon as it comes in. Um, but yeah, yeah, excellent movie. All right. That, yeah, that was uh, it was fantastic. So, uh, Steve, you ready for this one quick? Yes, yes, yes. All uh, right. Okay, so get on to your thing. Do your thing. The production quality, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Do your thing. You know. Okay, so this is the Wicker Man on 4K disc, the new 4K release of this with um, multiple different cuts. So you've got theatrical cut, the director's cut, and the final cut. Um, now, have either of you seen this? I'm assuming you have. No. This is the Nicolas Cage. No. 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 Okay. John, well, hang he, your head in shame. Well, that's I know worse he did than one. The Swifties thing. That's what I'm saying, and it was terrible. So that's why I wasn't yes. sure what if this was the same. Oh, no, this is because that movie Eve. was complete dog crap. I haven't seen this. Oh yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. This no. is Edward Woodward. This is the original okay. Edward Woodward, no, Christopher Lee, the proper one. Haven't seen <laughs> it. Oh my good. Right then, both of you ready for next Halloween, please? All right. Make yeah. Note of your diaries. <laughs> this is a stone cold horror classic. Really? Okay. You you. Oh oh yes yes yes. Um, it's very. It's a strange movie. Is it um, Midsummer at all? Kind of. Yes. Okay. It is, but of course, mid. It, it is a bit, but this one has a. Looking at the image it, in it, front of me. <laughs> yes. Quite well. Midsummer t- takes after this, not you know right. obviously because well, this film right. is from back in the you know seventies. Yeah. Um, it is. It's a great movie. I've seen this movie <clears throat> hundreds of times, but this is the first time that I and I saw the final cut not that long ago. But this is the first time watching the director's cut. Um, and it's really a, a very good film. I will not tell you the ending. You do need to see it. Um, Christopher Lee says this is the, his favorite film of his. And, wow. Or did say that, obviously, not anymore. Um, and it's his favorite film of his and uh, and his best performance as far as he's concerned. It's very off kilter. It's dark as anything, both literally and figuratively, and well worth seeing. So, um, yeah. It, and now this is a 4K version. The director's cut. Um, famously, the prints were lost. Original cinematic prints were lost. Some of them were actually put in as backfill for freeways over here, motorways, we call them. Oh, so wow. famously, were, were put in there and they were lost to time. And so they found a video version of one of the original negatives. And so in the director's cut, they've dropped these video version back in. Now that looks every bit as bad as you'll imagine it does. It's dreadful. But it is footage that's been lost to time. So you get these little interstitial video bits, but either side of that, you get some fantastic 4K video. Um, for Bearing in mind the vintage and the, the budget, it looks amazing. Um, sounds really good. It's only um, DTS stereo. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a HDMA stereo. Um, but I love this. This film is amazing. Yeah, well 2.1. I don't know if it's out stateside. I'm not sure. Um, but well worth it. Mm. Cool. 
Okay, so put it out in your diary, guys. Yeah, Next I'll, look, I, I was go. afraid this was the the remake, and I was like, oh, that's no, terrible. God, no, 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 The bees, the bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vibe Home Media in the chat. For anyone who is curious, I watched the new animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was a fun watch and has a great retro soundtrack. Yeah, I think uh, it's on Paramount Plus right now. Is it? Or Peacock. It's on one okay. of them. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Couldn't agree more, Vibe. It was, I saw it and it's awesome. I thought, I, I talked about it here on the show. You haven't seen it yet, John? No, no. Oh. I didn't get to the theater to see it and, um, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I'll stream it. I might just wait for for the, for the disc, disc to come yeah. out. I was I was shocked. Remember, I was shocked <laughs> at how good the movie. I I loved the movie, but the home theater experience I thought was amazing too. So, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, highly recommend that one. Good call vibe. Uh, let's see. I am going to bump Steve. You want to bump the? Um, I'd like John. Do you want to do? Uh, I was going to say we'll do the. Your next one. You can bump my the the two thousand and nine one. You can bump that. I'm going to bump like. both of those to next week, right? Because yeah, that'll yeah, fit better. Um, but I do want to see John. I want to hear about John. I'm going to bump. Well, my you're going to do one. your next. You got Christine next. Are you I doing that? Or you I'll do that next week. Yeah, but I do oh, okay. want to hear your because we've already done this one. So oh well, that's what I was just saying. You can skip mine, but um, you All know, right. people in L. Lake will. All right, then you know what we'll do. Show. Let's go. But yeah, exactly. you guys have both talked about this. I'll just do it real quick. Oh, okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I mean, you don't have to put the picture up if you don't want to. It's just Sleepy I Hollow 4K. I need it for markings. Um, <laughs> You're killing me here. It's a rhyme and a reason, pal. <laughs> I need this well, stuff. Well, I'm just saying that we're in a hurry, and you guys spend a lot of time on this, so I'm, I yeah, won't yeah, spend yeah. any time on it, really. Um, I did pick up the disc based on you guys talking about it. Um, yeah, everything you said, this is fantastic. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's, I, again, another movie I had not seen in – a long time oh okay. probably since it probably yeah. since it came out yeah um and so uh you know i was entertained because i didn't even remember a lot of it you know i mean i know i had seen it but um it was kind of new <laughs> a lot of it was new to me yeah um but yeah uh it looks it looks awesome it sounds awesome uh you know super there's a lot of dark scenes and they did you know the blacks really pop <laughs> yeah know? i mean it they, looks great i mean yeah, it, it looks awesome and uh and yeah just a super fun movie it's 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 yeah. well worth picking up if you haven't um but like again if you want to hear more about it go back to two shows ago <laughs> and DJ <laughs> talked about it we rave <laughs> about depth, it in depth yeah yeah so, and if you want to hear about the, the blu-ray go me, back like, a few years to, ago i hate to do these movies after you guys have already talked to them mm. but I'm watching a lot of them because of you guys yeah. talking about them. But yeah. then I feel like I have nothing else to add because That's you guys okay. have already done a deep dive into them. I think, uh, I think it should <laughs> so. just be, my name is John Ciccone and I support this message. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, go back two shows and listen to Steve and DJ. Um, but it, it, yeah, excellent. Well worth it. Yeah. So. There you go. And uh, Brockstar on sale on Kaleidoscape starting today. Oh, so nice. there you go. So see, <laughs> all right. Um, so I paid full price. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. Um, let's see what else we got. All right. So then are we skipping all the way to you and me? Yeah. Let's go to uh, you and I with the um, because I, I really want to talk about that one, uh, this one here, and uh, so we'll we'll do this and then we'll wrap up with our uh, with our conversation on the one we all did and that should okay. But this is a good one too. So. Take it away, John, because you inspired me to watch this. Gemini yeah, so, Star, so. Um, another disc I just picked up, uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I bought the 4K disc, so it's 4K HDR. Uh, there is no Atmos. It's in DTS uh, Master Audio uh, okay. 7.1, I believe. Um, now, I've seen this movie loads of times, um, but I probably have not owned it since DVD. Mm. I don't think I had the Blu-ray. Um, and... Um, Saw this on sale recently as well, and I had to pick it up. Um, this is another one, you know, animate. Obviously, it's an animated movie, I, and I didn't realize it's the same guy that did Coraline. Um, mm. uh, I mean, Tim Burton's the director, but the animator is the same guy that did uh, Coraline, um, and you can see some of the yeah parallels here. Um, but yeah, this is again. It, it, it I thought it looked great. Oh. Um, I thought it sounded great. Um, I mean, so vibrant. Um, 
you know, obviously this movie has a mood. It's I don't know if it's a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie. I wasn't yeah. quite sure when to watch it, but uh, November first. You know, <laughs> I'm in my October kick, so I'm watching. You know, I'm watching yeah. some Halloween movies. Um, yeah, I mean, so fun. I, I love this movie. I've seen it, like I said, loads of times. Um, but I thought this movie looked fantastic. Um, the 4K restoration here is 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 great. Yeah. Um, the sound again. It, it, you know. We're up mixing to Neural X, so it's plenty of, uh, you know, object-based sound going around. Yeah. And it it, it, it was phenomenal. So, um, yeah. Now I see you you put streaming and Kaleidoscape, so you did both Well, no. This. Your your note said NBC, so I didn't know what that meant. Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> oh, but I didn't know it was... I, I was like, NBC? I'm like, did oh, he watch this on television? It's just Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, yeah. so I'll change that in the notes. Oh, okay, okay. yeah. So nobody streamed it. <laughs> nobody streamed it. Yeah, no, I had okay. it on Kaleidoscape, 4K, All HDR. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I'm just reading them quick, and I'm like... Yeah. All right, I'll ask him later. Um, I just didn't want to type all that out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, NBC, who even says that anymore? It's like, that Peacock or is that ABC? Yeah. Know. Anyways, but yeah, Jen and I, I saw you had it and I was like, I said to Jen, I'm like, do you want to watch Nightmare Before Christmas? She's like, yeah. And like, neither of us had seen this in a long, long time. Yeah. And this is another one that you go, oh my God. It's just, it's like, Steve, last week when you were talking about, like, Spider-Man, like, the animation and stuff and how good stuff like that can look. And for this, I mean, stop motion and all of this stuff, it's all based on lighting and how you get the character, you're trying to get that. And it's like, but when they made this, they didn't know what HDR was. They weren't shooting this for HDR, mm -hmm. but, oh, my God, does it pop? I mean, the yeah. detail that you're getting and the, 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 the textures of the clothes and the 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 background that the the moon in like i'm looking at stuff in a way like we would have looked at stuff like how do you make something glow on paper in art right. you know how do you do and you look into what they're doing and it's just and i'm pointing stuff out like that to jen and i'm like look at how they did it I'm like you see oh my god it it is i mean awesome 4k and like you said the the sound on this it's just, it was just so festive but like you said and when it yeah. came out everybody was like is this a christmas or is it a yeah, halloween I don't, know it, movie? I don't know what it's time like, of year it came out originally i yeah. would imagine halloween but uh, i i don't i don't remember i, don't I just yeah. it, but it is definitely one that like it should be almost like a november 1st tradition right right <laughs> and it's like because that's what it's about and um but yeah lots of fun great great home theater experience great for for kids I think it's, yeah. I mean, it was spooky and scary at times, but just, I think just enough for kids. Um, when was the last time you saw it, Steve? Um, have you? Not for a long, not okay. for a long, long time. I, uh, Steve's not a if fan, I, have, I can see. Yeah. If I have seen it all, I don't remember it. And I don't hmm. think I have, because I, I, this was kind of one of the Tim Burton movies that's not really for me. I just could, and I think same thing. It's this mix of genres. Is it Christmas? Is it Halloween? And the bits I've seen of it, I found a bit. You don't like to mix your vegetables and your steak on the plate either, do you, Steve? <laughs> well, yeah, the serpent turf. <laughs> yeah, don't do, do any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, it's not, again, I don't, now don't get I me see wrong. Another I know clip that coming. people love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know that people love it. I know that people think it's great. Yeah. I, and I, that's fine, but I, it's not for me. I've never owned it. I'm, I'm not sure I would ever see it again unless it was someone age appropriate that hadn't seen it. I just happened to be in the room, but I, I personally <laughs> wouldn't make time to see this, but that's just me. And, yeah. and I, you know, again, I just, for whatever reason, I also, it looks a bit odd as well. And I think the animation oh. kind of put me off a bit, but like I said, I get I, that's why a lot of people love it. See, you know so what I, it will, yeah. I, what I thought, yeah. John, what did you think? I, I was nervous. A 4K uh, HDR of this, I was like, how's that stop motion going to go? Is that going to expose some stuff? I thought it was amazing. I thought it, I, I didn't think it, it exposed too. flaws. I thought it actually enhanced it. Well, and again, I, you know, I had read reviews uh, where people were really talking bad about the, the sound of this. So I was a little worried about that going into it to the point where I was going to buy this several months ago and that put me off like i almost didn't mm. I, I didn't buy it because i had read that it had a lot of issues with the sound um but came up on sale and so i picked it up 
Um, and I didn't have any, I didn't find any issues with it at all. I thought it sounded great. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've kind of learned to take some of that with a grain of salt because. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steve, I'll let you read that one. Cause it, I mean. Yeah. So Jordan um, says, so nightmare before Christmas, fun fact. Oh, Patrick Stewart. Who's yeah. he then? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, quite, yeah, yeah, don't put a picture up, for goodness sake. Did opening and closing narration that was cut from the film but was included in the film's soundtrack. So, yeah, there we go. Yes. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. You'll always, know, you'll know, always know the people that have been around watching and listening for a while when they know our in-jokes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Uh, I, so. I will say, though, DJ, and I guess maybe not for Steve, because you might feel the same way about Coraline then, but mm. uh, if you haven't seen that, DJ, mm. you, and you liked this, you you really need to watch yeah. Coraline. It, it yeah, I will now. The general, really, really I'll definitely good. check that I've out. Got, yeah. I've got the 3D Blu-ray of Coraline. Do you? That's when I last saw it in 3D, yeah. And, okay. I, and I was like you, John, I, I found it quite unsettling. The the buttons for eyes thing is yeah, really It's a little like, creepy. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely not for yeah. young kids. No. You can see young kids getting well, and the, really and the themes of it, yeah, the themes of it are a little dark too. Yeah, yeah the um, other world, you know, the yeah. other, the other, you know. But it's gorgeous. Mm. <laughs> like, gorgeous. I can even like I'm not a big 3D guy, um, but I can imagine in 3D it, mm. it, it probably looked uh, pretty great. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, from memory, it did. I haven't seen it for ages, but I've got right. it. I, okay, right then. Are we ready? Yeah, we yeah. had oh, yeah. uh, talking about Mark Hamill two seconds ago. Yeah. We had uh, <laughs> we had. We had 17 minutes to go, topical number of the day. Yeah. Um, but now we got 16 <laughs> minutes, guys. Can we talk about this for 16 minutes? <laughs> 16 Joker, hours. 4K, uh, Atmos, HDR. Dolby Vision for, for those. Dolby Vision. I mean, yep. work of art. Uh, I raved about this when it came out. John and I talked about it a bunch. I love the story. I love the home theater experience. Uh, Steve, you're the one that you lead us off, buddy, because you're the one that got us to watch yeah. it. Not that it took much, well, twist my arm. But uh, speaking <laughs> but of which, let me show your image. Is, there you is go. It's, um, it's just over a year. I'm oh, sorry, just under a year till the sequel comes out. So mm. the um, Folle Adieu, I think it is. Apparently musical, slightly concerning. Hopefully it won't be. Um, no, it is. But anyway, it, it, yeah, well, it is. Yeah, I'm hoping it's well, just a bit of both. I got theories on that, but we'll save that for another day. But go ahead. Yeah. but that, So that was that. And then the thing that really made, and I love this movie. This was my favorite film of 2019. Mm. Um, but what made me go back and revisit it again, this was the third time on disc, was Ridley Scott saying he thinks this film glamorizes violence. Now, one of, I mean, unfortunately, um, someone who was normally in the chat, who we all know quite well, hmm. was in the room when Ridley Scott said that um, and apparently said it not quite the way it was reported. But I I mean, that's nonsense. It, you know, it, it, this film does not glorify violence. It's quite the opposite. Hmm. Um, and so anyway, so that made me think, right, I mean, there's my excuse. Time to revisit it. And it's every bit as good as oh, it yeah. ever was. The, this is This is a masterpiece. Oh. Of a film, I personally think that this this film is fantastic, um, and it just gets better each time I see it, and and I see more in terms of the performance that that Joaquin Phoenix does. By the way, guys, very quickly, um, so Heath Ledger wins posthumously for The Dark mm -hmm. Knight, Joker. Yep. Joaquin Phoenix wins for Joker. Is this the first time two separate actors have won an Academy Award for playing the same character? I think so. I, um, I was thinking this after. I was thinking, I can't think of anything else, not off the top of my head. Nobody won for um, like a streetcar or something like that. You know what I mean? Like a streetcar named Desire or yeah, a remake. I, not, or, yeah, I, I that's the I'm only sure. thing I could think of. Was something like that. Yeah, but I, mean, I think I didn't we did Google talk it. about that at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so so anyway, but but the movie is absolutely awesome. And it and the, the home theater experience is is very good indeed. It's not a sh um the video is is it, I mean, lots of it was shot in IMAX and you can tell. I mean, there are shots on this. A shot earlier oh. in the which I put a picture up on Twitter of of um uh he, he's passed out, Arthur Flex passed out on the ground, and you've got and the camera pulls away from him and Every little detail. It almost looks like it's not real. The 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 you, where Arthur Flex on the floor, and as it pulls away, it almost looks like the the street is papier mâché or just not real because the detail levels are ridiculously mm. good. 
Um, so it's, but I think it's more of a showy visual than an audio <laughs> film. Although the atmos is very good, but it, the oh atmos is yeah. is subtle rather than like you, you know there are no massive storms in this. There no. are no ginormous action scenes. No, it's but the subway it, scene it's was atmospheric. Yeah, but it's more atmospheric. Scene, I think, yeah. And the score, the way they, yeah. if yeah, when yeah, you yeah, watch yeah. it, like I haven't seen this in probably a little over a year, but when it came out, I watched it multiple mm. times, and I was yeah. analyzing the bejesus out of this. And yeah. it was, and I think the way they use the score, the way they, like, the the idea of this is, is any of it real? Is any of this, and it's <clears> like, <throat> and then pay attention to the, and John and I went back and forth on all of this stuff on, between our two <laughs> shows at the time. And it was like, it's like, it, it's listen to the score when certain things are happening and it's like is it is that telling a tale and then how it moves in the room and how it gets quiet and when it gets quiet and if you've seen this movie notice when he's dancing and that's kind of what i'm wondering the musical is going to be about because he's dancing mm -hmm. at certain times when you're like what the heck now is that his imagination is that the trigger of his like is that showing like what is real what isn't real what is like you said it's a this this is a movie about i don't think you said it today but you said it the other day it's about mental health and stuff <laughs> mm, yeah. when did which this is, take which funny place? enough i watched this on world mental health day did you really completely by accident <laughs> yeah like i i did it wasn't on purpose but <laughs> yeah. i watched yeah. this movie and then i saw a tweet about it later and i was yeah. like well that's that's fitting <laughs> yeah <laughs> because um, it's it, it, um it I mean, it, it, it is a, it is a movie about mental health. It's about someone who is um, who can't relate to society, who's abandoned by society, and who is very ill. And this is why it's not not glorified violence. This man is extremely unwell, and and all of these various factors. It's about child trauma. It's about how people deal with that, mm. and about what happens when you abandon someone with this illness in society and expect them to cope with it and not expect them to vent in some way. And I, I mean, I've dealt with people that have got this sort of illness, not the laugh. I've not dealt with that, although it's a real no. neurological condition, but I have dealt with people who, who relate to the world in this way and have become violent, including on you know, one particular but occasion towards me and the barrister that were in the room with him. Um, so didn't get very far, but he tried. Um, and so, you know, this is, a, this is a fascinating character study. And I think it's a comic book movie in name only. I, I don't, I think you could, you could take the name Joker out of it, just call it Arthur and not the Dudley Moore versions. Mm, um, right. and just, and just call it that. And, and you'd be none, the, none, the, nothing gets taken away from it. Right. It's still just as but riveting see, and interesting. What I think is fun is they, and now we've had this conversation, John and I have had this conversation it, multiple times about <laughs> like, so my I have the theory that this entire movie is in his head. None of it happened. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, when you see it wind up at, in where you say, like, you take the comic book movie out of it and it, it, it's not a comic book. I'm like, no, they're actually using the comic to portray this. Okay, because we know what the comic characters did. We know what happens. And what they're doing here is like, so like certain like if you've watched it, people will be like, oh well, look at Martha and and uh, Thomas Wayne. Same thing happens to them. Why did you say that name? But, Sorry, but <laughs> here's the it. thing. Yeah, what was what was that name? The movie that they came out of was it's yeah. it's not the same movie, and people miss mm -hmm. that part, and that's what's in his head. What they came out of, if you pay attention, was a porn. Martha and Thomas come out of a porn movie with their son. I thought it was no. It's, it's the gay blade, isn't it? The Zorro, yeah, Zorro, yeah, the Zorro, gay blade. Zorro, Zorro, the gay blade. Yeah. But then the name. I think they're referring to like a porn because the one above it is like blow something. Well, Zorro, the gay blade is a real movie. I know he's from the, the he's real from movie. The things, but what I'm saying is, is this is in his imagination? Yeah, because the real it's, movie was Zorro, right? And well, it's right, like, and, but, that, but they're trying to make this this happen. I know. In, current times not it's not even it, current you know. times it was in the it's 70s set in the 80s well, isn't 80s. It? Right. 70, the 80s. Zorro 80s. the gay blade would have come out in that right. time but what where I'm, Zorro or would have anything come out in the 50s you know right but what I'm saying is it's that as in, an updated timeline and then but, but then all of the things that he does after that but then he's in 
he he ends up he get I mean it's just how he ends up where he ends mm-hmm. up and then but now he's got gray hair and John and I had the conversation he's like but his age difference I go well and I actually rationalized it in my head I'm like when you remember stuff you remember back to when you were younger you put yourself at that current age you're at and that's how you, mm. and that's why I'm thinking this entire thing, like almost like none of this ever happened. And that's the mental state of what he's in. Cause he's in mm. the hospital. So it's like, it's fascinating because like, did any of this happen? Because I mean, it, it's, I, I, I love watching this movie. What's real. What isn't real. Is any of it real? Mm. And because that goes through, I mean, that, goes throughout the movie and that's why i think like the home theater experience of it is giving us clues to stuff of what's going on with the score with Mm. the picture with the vibrancy with this and that and it's like just in when he's at the comedy club and how they utilize the sound and then lack of sound and then how it all of a sudden comes to be real and it's like but it pivots on a dime to positivity and you're like what the heck just happened there and it's Mm. it's it's awesome Interestingly, the the score was written before the film was shot. Oh, really? So they, they the actually do played that? the score on set. Well, well, quite. They, they, the um, oh, okay. Todd Phillips had the, had the the score done so they could play it on set mm. to create the vibe. Yes, there, there I see is what a you're shot. Saying. By the way, there is a shot over Chicago. I think this was Chicago, wasn't it? There is a shot over Chicago where there it's a tracking shot following one of the trains, and it, it sounded to me like the Dark Knight. You get that sort of that kind mm. of noise that you get at the beginning of the Dark Knight, and that thought I thought that was incredible. But that is it's sort of echoing this, you know, this say comic book kind of theme. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. As I said, it, the, the score was very unusually done and completed before the movie was even shot. So they shot mm. it to the score, not scored it to the shot. Right. Yeah. yeah so they had an idea so, of the vibe they wanted. They knew mm. what how they wanted like what they wanted that to play and that's awesome but yeah it's oops wrong button um there we yeah, go yeah it's it, it's it's just a i mean it's a it's a a fascinating movie i'm just looking at steven at just saying there um let me just bring this up guys two sec so yeah yeah steven at says on max and dolby vision and atmos have avoided watching it for its violent reputation we'll have to find my teddy bear and sit through it um it's i mean it is a violent it is violent because it does because it, yeah. it does portray whether this is all in his head or not, it does right. portray violent acts. I mean, there's no question about that. And 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 although I would say some of the worst violence, if it happened, is off screen. Off screen, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll make you anxious. This film, if nothing else, if you watch it properly, it'll 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 create some anxiety. Um, and so, yeah, I I think it's it's it, it's more than that. A suggestion that it's a violent film again. That's what Ridley Scott may or may not have been pointing towards. This is a character study, and it's done in real, uh, in a real way. As someone with this illness sees the world and relates to the world, um, and is something that is easily missed. And take it from someone with twenty three years of representing and and being in close proximity to people like this. Not obviously to some extent, to a greater or lesser extent. This is exactly how some people with this illness present themselves, and it's chilling in real life and yeah. it's very well observed in this. That's, yeah. that's what I would say. So, so well worth seeing Steve. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, the, I, I just, like I said, I just, the home theater experience on this, the story on this, I, when, when, when this movie was announced, uh, a lot of comic book fans and John and I included were like, I don't think we want this because we were afraid we were going to get an origin story. Um, and mm. that was the, what made, uh, the Joker special. He was the single character in like pretty much all of comic books that there was no origin origin story. And that was, you know, Heath Ledger's version pretty much exemplified that throughout the movie where he just kept giving you a different backstory. Right. So you never Mm -hmm. know what it was. And I remember walking out of this theater, out of the theater after seeing this and being like, they nailed it. It's not his origin story. You don't know what this is. He doesn't know what this is. I had a different theory at the time than I have now of what this movie's about, but just walking out, it's like, you knew 
what's real, what's not real, who knows what happened here. And it's, I mean, they, they, they literally, it's similar to like what we were talking about early in the fall of house of usher. It's like, they're taking, they're taking the, the, the story of the comic story of this and the comic characters and they're, they're actually basing something else in real world on that. And they're using that, those pieces to tell a story like this, which I think is a, again, it's a super creative way to, to, it's not regurgitating art, right? They're actually making a new piece out of something what you thought you knew. And it's, I mean, and again, this is another one that, I mean, it is a good story. You can watch it on your laptop, but I mean, the home theater experience, I think you're being slighted. Like, I know you guys said it's like, it's not really a sound, but I think the sound is just as important in this. Mm. Same with the picture, but I think it's, it's not, you know, it's not thunderstorms. It's not this, but it's the score. It's the way they move the sound in the room. It's the way they take away the sound. And if you don't have that dynamic or you reduce it by watching it on with a single speaker at the bottom of your laptop, it's not exactly the same experience. Mm. So. Um, yeah, it is. It is. a. It's a, it's one of those effective Atmos tracks rather than showy Atmos tracks, yes. which which can be every bit as effective. They get under your skin just as yep. much, but you don't then go, oh, my God, did you hear that explosion? Oh, my God, did you, you know, it's yeah. the whole, it's of a piece. Yeah. The whole, the whole is actually what you need to kind of experience. So, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah, it's a home theater movie all day long. Yeah. So, John, any last words on that? No, well, not really, because I know we're we're really pressed for time. All I'll say is this was the second viewing for me. I have owned the disc for quite a while. I've never watched it. Um, I saw this in the theater. DJ, you'll remember. I liked it. I didn't love right. it. Um, mm. Because I, I think I went into this with a huge chip on my shoulder because I absolutely did not want this movie right. to exist for all the reasons we spoke about. I'm a big comic guy, mm-hmm. and I begrudgingly I want agreed to see with this. <laughs> and like I said, and I, and I liked it, but I didn't love it. Watching it this time around, I have a much deeper appreciation for it. So I think it needs multiple viewings because there's mm-hmm. many layers oh. to this film. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and maybe in more than two, maybe maybe another one or another one, because like you said, you don't know everything that's happened 100%. Um, and there's a lot, lot going on in this film. But yeah, I think I have, like I said, I enjoyed it much more this second time around than I did the first time. Um, so... Uh, my two cents yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, well said. Awesome. Because it does need multiple, multiple viewings and you'll see right. more and hear more with every viewing. So, but yeah, we just, uh, we just hit six thirty, So I do have to get out of here. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Chris, Joe, Greg, and Shane for the super chat. Thank you. Kicking us off like that. That was amazing. Um, and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday we got a live show we got the 24 hour live show coming up we got all sorts of fun stuff uh, next week's takeover Tuesday another amazing conversation I'm going to get into a little bit of um, calibration we're going to have that conversation <laughs> so uh, I will see everybody then or hear you, see you next Tuesday but uh, boy that was bad um, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. careful with that yeah okay <laughs> gotta go apologize and celebrate a birthday so Everybody, thank you very much. Uh, We'll see you next week. What do you got to do until then? Go push play. What he said. Hey, Fred. This has been a Hey, Fred production with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions.